Over the years, I've had the chance to have some fun behind the wheel of some cool turbocharged Fortes and Optimas, but I've never gotten to drive a genuine Kia sports car because Kia hasn't sold one in the US. Until now, that is. You're looking at the 2018 Kia Stinger, a new rear-wheel drive-based sports sedan built on a new platform. There's a lot to get excited about with this car, but is it good enough to take on the likes of Audi and BMW? Let's go for a drive and find out. How does it look? What a great looking car, with that nice long hood and dramatically sloped roofline, as well as details like the big wheels, quad exhausts, and the integrated trunk spoiler that sticks out from the back of the car. There are some parts that look a little busy though, like the giant reflector strips on the rear haunches and the non-functional vents on the hood. At least the black fender vents and all the fascia openings are functional. So again, a really stunning car, if a little bit visually busy. How's the storage? Now the Kia Stinger is a liftback design, meaning it's got a very, very practical cargo area. It's a nice wide opening with a nice low lift over height. Although because of this sloping roof design, well, there isn't a lot of height back here. But fortunately you can easily fold down the back seats, expanding the trunk from 23 to 41 cubic feet of space. The center console compartment is a useful size, and there's a small cubby here behind the shifter, as well as this one up front by the charging ports for stashing your phone or keys. There are two cup holders in the console, but if you want to store more beverages, you'll find the door pockets aren't particularly large. Is it roomy? For the driver and passenger, there's plenty of adjustability to get comfortable with lots of head and legroom. But when you move to the back seat, you'll find that the cool styling really cuts into headroom. And unless you've got a really short driver up front, your feet will have to tuck under the seat. I wouldn't want to sit back here for too long. How does the interior feel? Now, the inside of the Kia Stinger actually reminds me visually of the layout you'll find in something like an Audi A3, and I think that's a good thing. It looks pretty nice. And in fact, a lot of the control surfaces look and feel of the same sort of quality I might expect out of an Audi. But at the same time, the interior can feel a little incongruous. You know, the door panels are lovely with these ornate door pulls, lovely brushed aluminum, ambient lighting, red leather. But then I look back at the dashboard and there's this huge expanse of just flat, matte, ungrained black plastic. So there's some really nice elements in here, but there's also some kind of boring ones in here. I mean, the gauges too look to me like they might've just come out of something like a Kia Optima. Is it well equipped? The Stinger is sold in five trim levels with the base and premium packing a two liter turbo engine, then the GT, GT1 and GT2 offering the 3.3 liter bi-turbo V6. This is a GT1 and it's really well equipped with common goodies like heated seats and a heated steering wheel, navigation, active safety tech like lane keeping, blind spot and pre-collision braking, a color trip computer, a big sunroof and a 15 speaker sound system. The GT2 has even more luxury features, but frankly, this car is pretty well equipped as is. How's the infotainment system? This eight inch touchscreen is really easy to use and I have to applaud the inclusion of physical volume, tuning and shortcut buttons to make it even simpler to use while driving. The built-in functions are straightforward and very quick to respond. There's even pinch to zoom on the navigation map and you get support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Is it a good daily driver? That's an important question because although the Kia Stinger is of course a sports car, it's the sort of car that someone might want to drive as their daily driver. And if you do, well, you're gonna be pretty pleased. Like pretty much any modern sporty car, there are multiple driving modes. If I go down to comfort or eco, well, it gets pretty comfortable and relaxed to drive in terms of the throttle response, the steering weight, and so on. What I like about this car is that it's pretty quiet even when you're driving it on the highway and the ride quality is actually reasonably composed considering its sporty intentions and big wheels. 
Interestingly, I think you do hear the suspension impacts more than you feel them, but yeah, overall plenty comfortable and tractable, easy to drive. This eight-speed automatic transmission is nice and civilized, and the start-stop system has impressed me with how smooth it has been in urban driving. Is it fun to drive? I have been excited to drive a Kia Stinger for a long, long time, and the car really doesn't disappoint. It's a lot of fun. Now, Kia will sell this car with a 2-liter turbo engine with 255 horsepower, but we haven't had a chance to drive that yet. So we're in the GT with a 3.3-liter bi-turbo V6 with 365 horsepower, and it is a great engine. Tons of power, great sound, really nice linear response. It'll get you to 60 in 4.7 seconds and onto a top speed of 167, so certainly serious performance car numbers. At the same time, there are some aspects of the Stinger that maybe aren't quite as precise and delightful as some of other cars in this price range, you know. The steering feel and feedback, even though I've got it in sport mode and it's heavier, it still kind of feels like it's going through treacle almost. It's not quite as alive as I might hope for in a sports car. When it comes to stopping though, the Stinger doesn't disappoint. This one has Brembo brakes with four piston calipers and 13.8 inch rotors up front and 13.4 inch discs with two piston calipers in back. They're super effective in hard driving, although Kia hasn't quite perfected the pedal feel to the precision of some rival cars. Rear wheel drive is standard on all versions of the Stinger and I'm actually really excited to get to drive a rear drive one because this one is all wheel drive, which makes a lot of sense if you live somewhere in the snow belt like where we are. But don't despair, even if you've got all-wheel drive, when you put it in sport mode, 80% of the engine's torque goes to the rear wheels. So ultimately, although we haven't been on a racetrack with it, this car still feels nice and balanced. How's the fuel economy? This is the least efficient version of the Kia Stinger, the all-wheel drive V6, and it's rated for 19 miles per gallon city and 25 mpg highway, which still isn't too bad considering the performance and the size of the car. The base 2-liter engine with rear-wheel drive can return as much as 22 city and 29 highway. How much is it? Pricing starts at $33,000 for the base Stinger with the 2-liter engine, and the cheapest 3.3-liter version, the GT, starts from $39,000. Adding all-wheel drive to any model is $2,200. This very well-equipped test car rings in at $48,000, and a fully loaded example will cost you about $54,000. That's a great deal when you look at how much you might pay for a similar Audi or BMW with equivalent features. What are the negatives? The Kia Stinger is a great car and I'm really impressed with it and I've had a lot of fun driving it. But whether it's the interior materials or the way it drives, it just doesn't feel quite as polished as some of its more established competitors. Who should buy it? The Kia Stinger is great if you're looking for a fun-to-drive car that still has a lot of everyday utility. And I think it's great that it's a little bit different and even a little bit more affordable than its German rivals. But I don't only like the Kia Stinger in comparison to other vehicles. Standing on its own, it's a great new entry that brings something fresh to the sporty car segment. If you were paying attention, you might have noticed I was wearing a new watch. This is the Strat 3, designed by famed Formula One technical illustrator Giorgio Piola. To find out more, visit GiorgioPiola.com.